Hi, Carol here and welcome to my craft room. Well, look at these dies we're going to be using for our card today. This is Penny Black Wonderful Nature uh, Animal Set and some clouds, some Tim Holtz Evergreen trees. We're going to use some stitched waves here to make some snow banks. Love this set. Uh, I've used it one other time and I knew it had to be for this card today. We're going to use a full background die. This is the Circle Star die. I use it quite a bit, especially for winter Christmas cards. I've already had a pre-die cut, a Merry Christmas, the same one we used on the last uh, video, the one with the floating sentiment. And... Um, this is just going to be a fun card. It's going to be a box card. Not only a shaker, not only is it going to have background elements, but it's going to look like a little box on top. So let's take the guts out and, oh, there's our friend again. Yeah, wow. He thinks that's birdseed. <laughs> I have to throw this stuff in. I mean, it's, it's near midnight tonight. This embossing folder right here, this little oval dotted, uh, emboss. I love it. Then we're going to use this one that I had in my stash I haven't used before uh, and then the dotted Stampin' Up embossing folder that Merry Christmas that we used of course and look at that. Isn't this beautiful? And I did this on 80 pound white cardstock. I did not use a heavy one because we're going to be using quite a few elements on it and I don't need a heavy weight because I use the 120 pound white as the card base. Believe it or not, this is a four and a half by five and a quarter inch card, but it's going to have a little bit of overhang, and you'll see that later on. And it's also going to be thick because it's going to be a box shaker. So we're going to take our dotted uh, embossing folder. I think this is the cuddle bug. Yes, it is. And we're going to run that through and set it aside because we're going to be making some snow drifts with that. And look at this gorgeous die. I, I'll give you the number right here. It's from Memory Box if you're interested. And the name of it is Peaceful Snowflake Frame Set. I've used that large one one other time since I've bought it. And look at the way it's wrapped. It's simply gorgeous. I always fold back the top so the sticky doesn't interrupt me taking out the envelope back and forth and if we're going to uh, cut through them we might as well add all of them and then put what we don't use back in the envelope. I'm going to do a few things different here. I'm going to be using mostly 110 pound cardstock as you can see here on the Stampin' Up! dotted oval. Love, love, I can't say how much I love this emboss folder and here we go. I mean, I've never done my craft room on this angle. And look at our little birdie. Such tweet stuff in this room, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd walk around with the camera and show you the Big Shot Pro. If you're interested in it, can you get a ton of dies on this? And I'm going to show you the setup for it if you're interested. You get the long base plate. That's the bottom thick one, the gray one. So if you're going to emboss, you're going to put that down. Then you're going to put uh, one of your plates. Aren't they huge? Then you're going to put your embossing folder. And you have this other plate. And then you use this um, sheet. It's the B sheet. It's the one that's in this beautiful oyster color. And then you use that. But if you're going to die cut, you do the same thing. Only take that out and put the turquoise one that's thicker on top so that it gives you a good press. And look at that. Oh, I'm telling you, this Stampin' Up! is a must-have emboss um, folder. And now we get to some electric fun. I love this machine. When I broke my wrist a few years ago, I was so thankful that they came out with the Vagabond. So now we're going to use the microcore tape to put down our die over top of the Stampin' Up! emboss. But I changed my mind. Yeah, that's the wrong one. It's the wrong die. Take it off, Carol. And I'm going to put the decorative die. This is the memory box die. Oh, yes. Doesn't that look better? It goes right over top of that. 
I run it through to cut it and then the only thing, right, is we flattened out the dots because we already put the embossing folder through the uh, Big Shot Pro. So now all you have to do is take what you just flattened out and put it back into your folder and look at that, it fits perfectly in there. I just love it. But I want those dots back up, so we'll deal with that in just a minute. I take some Stick It. I'm over here on the other side of my island. Isn't that funny? And um, I put it down on my 110-pound cardstock, turn it over. I put another sheet on the other side, and this will eliminate using liquid glue all the time to put my little critters down, all my little deer animals. This is hysterical. I walked over and started doing stuff. <laughs> I left my camera over there and here I am crafting and my camera's over there. I don't know what I was thinking of telling you. It's such a fun card. I just get enthralled with the work I do. I love creating cards. It's just wonderful. Then when I went to the end there, oh yeah, this is my uh, powder that I put on the baby powder I put inside the dies so they don't stick. If you have uh, your dies sticking, just pounce some baby powder in there, some anti-static powder, and look at all the dies I have on this sheet with this Big Shot Pro. There's tons of them, I tell you. And um, I, lo I love this machine. It has the width that you can do so many things with it, and it has the length. I think it's 15 inches. It's absolutely uh, a great machine to have. But if you have wrist problems, it's good to have the electric machine. So I have one on each side. I also have the black Stampin' Up! one. <laughs> and that's for if I have any friends over, you know, and uh, want need a machine. So look at that. And then I turn that... Uh, turquoise plate over. Remember the turquoise is for die cutting and that way I can make sure it stays flat. So I, I do it once each way and then I'm just going to show you I have a nice long uh, six foot, I think it's six foot island and then I always stand up here. I'm just bringing it back and I have everything at my fingertips that I use for making cards and here you have the stick it. I ran all my dies through here because when I put the scene down, it's so nice to just take the backing off, place it down, and I want to have all of my elements double thick. So this allows me to take the tape off and make it too thick high. Love it. So here I take the pick and I'm just taking the elements out of the dies and I'm going to make a big pile, like little weed piles actually, of everything that is in my mind to make a 3D element card. Now I took a small oval die. I need to cut this out and I found one that was not as large as the hole because I want to have that ridge. So I die cut the hole out of our Stampin' Up! embossed piece and then it's that one right there and I got enough space to get my scissors in there and I'm going to cut along that wonderful uh, indent in there but first I need to run it back through the folder so that my dots become alive and um, it looks like the first time we ran it through our machine because you know when we cut this with the die it flattened out the dots but so easy to bring it back look at that you just set it down bring it back and look at looks like new and then I want to get it very detailed um, I love detail. You could tell. <laughs> That's why this video is a tad long. But I think adding little details to anything, any projects, just adds a little bit of enjoyment. Don't you think? So I go around the edges with a nice sharp pair of scissors and then I take my scissors and close them and I face the embossing a cut towards me and I actually run my scissors around there and it'll push any stray um, pieces of paper to the back and then it looks like a perfect cut. So now I'm taking some scotch tape and I turned it around and I'm going to put that outer ledge that we die cut. 
and I wanted to take you through a step-by-step -step process. If you uh, do this video and you have these dies, I just wanted to show you each step of the way. There's my scotch tape and um, I really like step-by-step uh, -step tutorials. So here we have those dots and it has the stitched edging. I want to make sure the stitch shows. So just put it on the back of whatever scene you want. It's, isn't this cute? It's just a cute little scene. I just love it. I wanted to have a little scenery behind this oval die. So I want to have the stitches as well on my little uh, snow banks. So be mindful of that when you're putting them on there that the stitching is to the top. And then make your fun little uh, snow banks, which we're going to have soon, uh, shortly in Ontario here. It's getting cool. Take your uh, tape and just make some nice thin lines and, and then you can just adhere it to the back. And now we need to find some stars and circles that match. This is the shaded lilac and we're going to use the tumbled glass and we're going to use one more darker color. But see how I want to get the, uh, I want the lilac in there and I want two stars and three circles. Oh yes, I have a plan. I want to have right there. I want to have five, an odd number, and I want to show the light blue, the lilac, and then I want to take the edge of my mid-tone and make some lines like a sky would look, just like that. And there you have it. Oh yeah, there's a little circle there to the right, so it's five, and I'm going to cut that out, and then I'm going to store that I always keep my guts so that if another project I need it to have a sky, I already have it ready. It doesn't matter how thick we have it here because we're going to build that shaker. We're going to have a 3D element and it's going to sit high on the card base. Isn't that gorgeous? I love the sky. Then we're going to put tape all over the circles and the stars so I can put that Dazzling Diamonds by stamping up in there. That is the most sparkly, sparkly, sparkly stuff ever. Oh yeah, I was cleaning that up all afternoon. I had to vacuum up my room because I can't leave my room unless it's clean. Isn't that crazy? So, um, you know, I don't care how much mess I make in the process, but when I finished my project, my craft room has to be sparkling as well. This is the fun part for me is creating a scene. We have these beautiful deer we have, and each deer faces in an opposite direction, the same with these little bunnies. And some are grazing and some are standing up. I absolutely love it. And in, in this set, in, 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 <laughs> this set you have the uh, evergreen tree. And then there's our Merry Christmas. And I love to just stand back and watch it come into play. So I didn't want to have a lot of white going. I wanted to bounce this beautiful uh, memory box die with the scallops and the pretty little um, snowflakes on the sides. I wanted to stand out. So I did the ombre effect and I used the same blues as our card yesterday from dark to light. And then I die cut some thick, thick acetate with this same image. Instead of putting glossy accents and making a mess, I thought it'd be wonderful to just put a piece of acetate over top to get the shine and it worked wonderfully. You only need four glue dots to do this technique. So here we have um, the wonderful thick uh, acetate and I'm looking at it, I'm, I was thinking at first I might make a little shaker out of this centerpiece, but then I thought, no, 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 I want to go on a different trail. So I set the middle aside, and then I'm going to use four glue dots, and I'm going to put the glue dots, ignore me what I'm doing there. I don't know what I'm doing there. I guess I was just having a little soliloquy and um, just talking to myself. That's what you say if people find you talking to yourself. No, I'm just having a soliloquy. And uh, here I put my first glue dot on the end. Yes. And uh, you want to move it over so that it doesn't go out the edges. And I put one on the other side. I put one on each scallop, top and bottom, just one. So the total is four glue dots. 
and then I'm pushing my pokey tool to make sure you cannot see the dot. Then I place my die cut over top and now we're going to make our four and a quarter by five and a half inch card although I added a sixteenth of an inch to the top and the bottom. So it was a sixteenth of an inch wider so I had to make my own base and I love it anyway. You just, um, isn't that awesome? And there's the outside wonderful embossing folder I had in my stash. I think it was perfect for this scene. Look how the two ends of the snowflakes hit the embossing folder right at the right places. I mean, this card was meant to be. Now this is the stick it sheet where we have the tape on both sides of our images. I love this. There's no mess with sticky glue. You just take the back of the paper off and then the front of the paper to add your same image you die cut from 120 pound cardstock and it's nice bright white and I have my little bunny on the hill and um, here I'm just taking my really detailed good scissors to get the glue dot any piece of that glue dot in the snowflake I don't want to be able to see it I want everything to be clean and crisp and detailed so let's turn it over and get some double-sided tape off of that roll because we're going to lift this up as well and uh, this is that this is what's going to make the box effect so that this shaker card looks like an actual box and uh, you're going to take the tape off the back and then we're going to seed it and continue to make this I'm not going to say wonderful I'm going to say gorgeous <laughs> scene so I'm taking some of my multi matte glue and uh, I had a squirt of it on the paper so I took some off and spread it around and now there it goes with the acetate on top and I seed it on top of the uh, sheet that went around so now it's three layers high. Isn't it gorgeous? It's just kind of like a step by step, step up thing. Then I took a piece of this uh, wonderful evergreen leaf and we're going to put it right there. I'm going to take the, and this is out of the stick it. Remember, we don't have to use any, not very much liquid glue anyway. Take all of that release paper off the top, and we're going to use the dazzling diamonds. Look at that. Ah, I know. I get too excited when I make these cards. I can't help myself. I just love, love details and I love all the little extras you can add to your cards. So now talking about extras, let's grab a C2 and a C1 Copic marker. We're going to add some color to the little bunny and to one of the deer. I want to keep some of the elements white but the C1 and C2 is a perfect combo for getting uh, shading in for white animals. I think it looks very pretty and there's our Christmas, which will not go there. But I was going to take a break here and run and get myself a Coca-Cola. Well, I have my Coca-Cola and I'm ready to get started on almost like a part two, isn't it? Almost 36 minutes long. I take my C1 and C2 and I'm going to Copic Color. Did you see that we put down the Stick It Deer? And then all I had to do was take the layer of paper off and then add my 120 pound die cut deer on top. No mess. Easy peasy. Love that stick it. To get in the habit of die cutting, stick it on the front and back of very thick cardstock because when you want to add some uh, dimension to your images, you can just peel it back like that and you have. 120 pound on top of 120 pound cardstock. Isn't that awesome? You have no mess, and especially with delicate features like in this deer, I think it's just the best thing created. So let's go with our little pine tree. We're going to have evergreen tree, pine tree, whatever this is. It came in the set with the deer and the bunnies. And I want to slide it down underneath there and add some little glue dots right here with my detail glue. And I'm going to add it to like snow 
on all of the little limbs that stick out on the tree and a few in the middle and more dazzling diamonds. It just looks amazing. It, it's just, I don't know, it's just coming together as this beautiful winter scene. And then I make sure I don't lose any of that dazzling diamonds. I scoop it up. Oh yeah, and look at that close up. I always have a little paintbrush near me. And oh, I did the clouds as well up on the top just so you can see that. I'm pointing how they're in the stars and in the circles. And then you just take out what you don't want. It's coming together and I am happy. I keep my dazzling diamonds in uh, salt and pepper shakers. And uh, I think it's a wonderful way to keep your powdered things. And even for your powders to put on for anti-static powder, I look for them at thrift stores. So keep that in mind, the glass ones with the uh, silver top. That way you can see your product. Here I'm going to move on and I cut the end off of the Tim Holtz uh, pine tree die and I'm going to seat that so that lonely big evergreen there has some neighbors. Yes, and I'm going to slide them up. I cut, see that uh, circle right there in that image, the uh, flourish. I cut it so that it's set right on top of that and uh, it looked really nice. And then I'm going to add some dots of my glue so that I can add more dazzling diamonds. Look at it all over my hand. Yes, but I there's not a diamond. You couldn't find another diamond in my craft room after I cleaned. Oh no, I didn't want to see any of it when I was finished. But I love to see it on my card here. I think it looks very lovely. I hope I haven't lost anybody because of the length of this video. I really wanted to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial on how I, my thought process as I go through building a layered card like this. And I thought it would be better than putting a part one and part two, right? Because I think those end up being uh, just as long or even longer. So um, yes, thank you for staying with me. And now I'm going to use some enamel accents in the black so that I could put some little eyes on my deer and on my little bunny and then as I'm working through it has time to dry. Um, I actually took out the heat tool and I was thinking what am I thinking if I dry the eyes I'm gonna lose all my dazzling diamonds. <laughs> uh, think about talking about losing stuff yes I'm taking that uh, leaf that uh, off right there so that we can build our shaker and that's the actual evergreen leaf that we put on the bottom and it really came up well. So now I'm going to make really thin pieces of double-sided tape here off of that big um, honk and roll that we buy and you can see that it's nice and thin and I put three layers high just so you can be prepared when you're cutting it. So one um, half inch roll will give me three of these and I set them on and I, I stagger them. I make sure there's no holes because I'm going to be using prills. Oh yes, this is celebration. We're almost done. Woohoo! Yes! And it's only quarter after 12. All right, so now we need a nice thick piece of acetate. So I am just cutting it uh, by sight here and uh, making sure it's going to fit but whatever hangs over I'll just cut it off. So now I need another layer of the double-sided tape off the roll. I'm going to put my little piece of evergreen down there and let it kind of seat up a little bit and it looks like the deer is eating off of the evergreen leaf. Now here comes these wonderful prills. Look at They have two little colors light and dark in there then I added some turquoise. Oh, I love these things. And uh, that's going to be our shaker element. After looking at this and the prills and all of the different sizes of paper that I had stacking, I know it's quarter, it's 18 minutes after 12 and I'm eating Lay's potato chips. Mm-hmm. And a Coca-Cola. Yeah, it's after midnight and that's what I'm having. Yes, a snack as I'm editing. 
but it's delicious. Now I want to add another layer of the double-sided tape high because I didn't want the prills to catch on the acetate. And also, when you put acetate over top of anything like this, I have baby powder that I put right onto my acetate for the inside so that all of these uh, little elements don't take the static and stick to my acetate. So just run. You can see I ran it through. Then I take a Kleenex and I wipe it down and you won't be able to tell that on the inside of this you have um, baby powder or any static powder, whatever you have. Now I'm going to press it on there and look at we're almost there. We're going to make, I'm taking off the excess of the acetate and I hope this wasn't too long for you. Um, I hope that you um, could pick up a little bit of uh, inspiration from this card. You know that I always get a little nervous when the videos go really long, but uh, I find that if you're going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial, you need to have them as long as it takes to uh, complete the tutorial. So anyhow, I'm adding double-sided tape here. This is a uh, sixteenth of an inch over top of the tape that we already had down. Now I had this set by Dynamics that has the frame, but it's double stitched. I absolutely love it. And it's five uh, and a half inches long. So I cut eight of them. And this is where we're going to make the box card. We're going to need four for the top. And then we're going to inlay four around the edges. I think you're going to love this effect and it fits wonderfully. So now you just take off the uh, double-sided tape you have on top of your acetate and put this down. Isn't this gorgeous? The bright white, the stitching on the top and the bottom of the frame. And I love it that you just get one five and a half inch strip going across that die. I'll have to put that in the subscription box there. I don't think I mentioned it. And then I'm putting more uh, double-sided tape because I want to make sure the tape is on top of these um, um, posts that we're putting up. The frame post there, the double-sided uh, dotted frame, because see how it's going to go on top. I was going to leave it over the edges and make it kind of look like a barn door, you know, type uh, thing there, but I ended up cutting it off. And I'll show you why when we get moving along here. But it's better to have little extra space than not have enough, right? So there we go. We cut it off even. That's what I'm doing now. I thought I'm going to cover that with some animals on the bottom. So now I'm taking the Merry Christmas and I decided to ombre that. So I have got out the three colors and I just did it directly onto my mat. And... This is where, if you're working with a lot of white cardstock, <laughs> you have to remember to have something wet, a wet cloth beside you right there to get that up because boy oh boy, if I was to touch this uh, and had to start again, yeeks. Yes, I wouldn't get done till like four o'clock this morning. <laughs> so anyway, I was extra careful and I'm taking my glue I put it on the back. I'm just kind of grabbing my tweezers. I dabbed a bit from glue I had on the mat as well. And then I'm going to center it right there. Oh, I just love this. It has almost the same effect of the card I did yesterday with the uh, uh, hanging, the disappearing sentiment. And now I'm going to do Christmas the same way with the ombre and just add you know, dark to light, mid-tone. And then I saw a couple of pieces on the top there. I just added a little bit. But you have to be careful when you're working with all that white. And uh, I, I keep reciting that to myself. <laughs> and now we're going to place the Christmas down uh, and center it as best as I can and wipe it up. Yes, I'm always thinking to wipe it up. And then uh, get that little eye Remember, Christmas has the eye in it, 
and I grabbed one of those guts pieces I had from the uh, star and circle die. That's why I saved them. They make excellent dots. And then I add a little bit of glue over the eye and I put that little dot and uh, the dot came out really dark which I liked because then people don't have to say oh is there an eye on there yes so now orange tape you know this orange tape that sticks like crazy we're gonna put it all the way on the inside all the way around the edges of this whole card because this is where the box comes into play so put that orange tape on and then you just when you go to release it, it releases wonderfully. And look at that. You're going to seat it underneath so it grabs hold of that underneath part. It's perfect. And take your scissors and then cut it. Drag your scissors along so you can feel the side of the card base. And it will cut perfectly. And, and remember, the dots on that um, frame, make sure all the dots are at the top. I had to remember that you don't want to you want it to be uniform when it's going around and then once I completed that I started putting the little animals I put a deer to the left of Christmas at the, the tree was too big so I had that little bird out of the stick it sheet so I have a sticky on the top sticky on the bottom when I release the paper guess what's going there dazzling diamonds oh yes looks beauteous and then I had this uh, evergreen twig I cut a piece off put it underneath because the bird has to seat on something right and look at that I left that without diamonds on it and now we are complete all we have to do is lovely oh I'm so pleased with this box shaker and when you turn it around all the edges, it looks like you actually made a little box. And then when you put your tape on the back, overhang it just a tad and it will grab hold of the underneath part for the boxed edges. And um, yeah, it'll stay just like that. Now we need to get sturdiness. I needed some sturdiness on the inside of this. You know I do. So, um... I grabbed a sheet to cover the edge and then I'm going to do an ombre but the ombre is going to be on the corners. We're just going to run it along because you're only going to see a little bit and you want to make sure you grab that uh, wonderful purple color and dark to light. It always, don't panic when you look at it there because it does dry lighter and um, yeah it's just stunning. Then I took my 3-inch Suquang tape on the back of another sheet. This sheet I ran through the embossing folders, 120 pounds. And I did the same embossed folder as I did on the front of the card. Isn't it pretty? And that's going to go on the inside of the card base when you open it up. And I'm telling you, look at it. We're going to build a scene, a nice evergreen tree, the Tim Holtz die, a beautiful deer on that ledge that's already created by the die, by the embossing folder. And then we have the little bunny looking the opposite way over in the corner. Oh, I just think this is so sweet when you open it up. That's all you need right here. And then I put glue on the back of Christmas. I take my T-square ruler to make sure I get it perfectly even. Yeah, turn it around there, Carol, and then push it down onto your ruler, and it will be gorgeous. Grab your dot, put it up there, don't forget that, and thank you so much. Have yourself a blessed week, and thank you for your comments. Thank you to all my subscribers. There you have that. Isn't that pretty? And I will see you on the next tutorial. We'll be doing Christmas cards. And uh, I'll switch up the colors on the next one. These, look at the box. Isn't it beautiful? Okay, enjoy the pictures, and I will see you on the next video. Take care, everybody.